Hey everyone, it's Mike from Sagaborn. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about uh, how to run this game and how to get it to your table. So this is mainly uh, tips for story guides on what would make Sagaborn a little bit different than some other games and uh, why it's easy to get to the table. So the first thing is, is I made Sagaborn basically the way I wish that like, you know, other games like the Big Dragon game would have actually made it, which is making it easy to make the story that you want to make. So I, I tried streamlining the rules. Uh, that meant like anytime there's a rule at the table where people were like, you know, oh, I got to open up the 600 page book and find out this one rule to do this one thing. I was like, there's got to be an easier way. So uh, I came up with the heroic action, which is just a, a contested action, you know, between normally between the story guide and the player. Roll off whoever rolls the highest wins. So that's, you know, you can do things like, oh, I want to take the table at the tavern and flip it over and pin the guy up against the wall. You know, well, contested roll. Uh, we, we have a campaign going right now where one of the people is a dragon rider. And so, like, half the stuff he does in battle are heroic actions because he wants to do fun stuff. You know, jumping on his dragon, flying through uh, the battle, not getting hit, stuff like that. All that would be really hard if you're trying to do these really more complex rule set books. And, uh, and mine just makes it easy. It's always just like, all right, give me that heroic action and let's make, you know, a cinematic event happen. And, uh, and I, that's been one of the big things that I've gotten in feedback that people really like is the heroic actions. Um, some other stuff is I've got like, you know, a limited class system. Um, so you, you know, you got your nine classes, but they only get up to level eight. So you don't really get into the whole lot of the power creep that you get into other, uh, systems though. Also with Sagaborn, I always say the story guide is the fan of the players. So that means like so what if they're overpowered you know you're just there to tell a good story you're there to have fun you know nobody ever calls out like oh you know the avengers are super overpowered well maybe they do but like you know you don't want to see the avengers just roll a one over and over and over again so i i like to keep the game uh fun but also not make it so that way people are you know scrolling through 300 different uh abilities I instead just you know Here's your classes, here's some fun stuff. And that doesn't mean that you can't customize things. Uh, we have a talent system that is a, a point by system. So it's not like a, uh, an old tree where you have to go through a certain way to get certain talents or feats. Uh, so with the talent system, you can really just lock down and build the character that, that you wanna build. Mana system, that's another big one. Uh, with magic, it was always the the memorization, the Vancey and magic system from the Big Dragon game and others, just didn't make sense to me. You know, it's like you have to wake up, memorize this thing, and and then cast it. And, and sure, that that works well in a strategic point of view if you're playing a really high end strategy game. Uh, but at my table, I was always like, no, if you know the spell, just cast it. You know, like, and we had to come up with a way to to make that work where it's not just unlimited. So we came up with mana. You know, uh, a, a fireball spell can cost one mana or it can cost seven mana. Uh, of course, we call it elemental blast. Uh, you can choose different uh, types of elements to use with, with any elemental spell, which is pretty neat. But uh, that just that allows a, a magic to be, once again, more customizable. And uh, also just a, a little bit easier on the players and the GM... Uh, you know, if you're running a bad guy that has a whole bunch of spells, well, you're not keeping up with memory slots and which ones it's spent. It just has mana and a certain amount of spells, and you can cast them as you need. So that has uh, been another great benefit to the table for Sagaborn and, and the simplicity of it. You know, obviously, it's a D20 system. It's a familiar system. It's a system that a lot of people know. So not only is it streamlined, but you're coming in already getting the gist of it. You know, you know... Oh, well, this is, you know, uh, health is hit points, defense is, is armor, and so on. So there's not a lot of those questions. It's very easy to, to you know, transition your table from, from a normal, you know, uh, bigger game right into, you know, an indie game like Sagaborn uh, that's D20. The, the, for, this is the big thing for story guides. Uh, I really think that 
you should be able to build the story that you and your players want to play. I just put out a free uh, add-on book in our uh, Codex Dominum, which is sort of the uh, story guides like toolbox where he can go find, sorry, where they can go find, uh, you know, random uh, things to pull into the game. So I just finished uh, a add-on for horror, which is a, a way... Uh, let's say you wanted to run a campaign or adventure that leaned a little bit more into, you know, uh, cosmic horror and the unknown and uh, using this horror point system where basically as things uh, uh, traumatize you or affect you, you gain horror. And then uh, basically as you gain horror, it becomes harder and harder to do stuff. You, you get different conditions like shaken or fatigued and panicked and so on. And, uh, and it's a nice simple way to add that mechanic to the game without any of the you know uh baggage that used to come with older systems like that uh this is much more of a generalized but still very useful system that can make you build a game if you're like all right you know it's it's coming up to october we want to do some some halloween games let's uh let's jump in and and uh uh add horror to the next adventure and and you could push and pull these in and out you know we i have the uh, strongholds is, is a uh sort of centerpiece to how i run campaigns i like the players to find a place in the world to make it theirs you know it's uh they're not just murder hobos going from town to town and they you know if that's the game you want to play that's cool i tend to like to have a base of operations and then the people get involved in that base they know the the inn that's that's nearest to their stronghold they know oh well well if we go down to talk to this guy he's got a real good library in his manner and and then you have buy-in in the world and you have something more than than just a hack and slash game you have uh what i want is always you know this building of a story this building of allies this building of sort of a, a, a almost like a player faction which you know i hope to do another book uh, or another small add-on book that that will deal with factions as well um but but so like my my main playtest group they had a stronghold and then they went out on this super epic adventure i wanted to have an adventure that was one of those where it seemed like i mean they were gone for two years in game and it took us two and a half years in real life to run it uh so they weren't at their stronghold for like over two and a half real life years so they just got back to it last week and i'm super excited to see like you know they're uh they're gonna be building out new rooms they're gonna be figuring out crafting uh also for for player buy-in i said well hey everybody come to the table next week and bring three uh new npcs that live in the town that's built up around your your hideout and uh and so that way they're gonna have a direct hand in the world that they're then involved in and that's the that's the sort of thing that I, I'm enjoying is bringing these small things, adding in a new story, and you can walk away from it, obviously, for two and a half years. Go, okay, we're not really going to have a stronghold except for this, you know, wagon that's being pulled pulled along by a pony. And then two and a half years later, they come back and they go, okay, our story now is going to focus on the stronghold for a while. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do with the Codex Dominum books. That's what I'm trying to do with Sagaborn is like, here's some simple rules, and then here's a bunch of add-ons that you could sort of pull out of what, what you want, what you need. Uh, to to make your game yours and as always just trying to keep it simple trying to make it so that way you guys who are picking up an indie game can just pick it up make a make a story and and go with it so another thing that i am very excited to to be able to offer is uh you know i've been building this world for a while i you know it was i think in 19 99 that I first wrote on a sheet of paper about uh, the world of of Euteria and the Eridani people and um, I think I was playing EverQuest at the time and ever since then I've been building this world uh, through through different you know tabletop games we played and then slowly Sagaborn evolved out of those and so for you know as as long as I've been building websites I started building websites with more information on them about this the uh, the world and I have all that available for free on the darkreturn.com that's the world site we have uh, the creature compendium is up there with all the creatures for free uh, I've got you know cities I've got uh, maps 
If you want more detailed maps, uh, I've got a Patreon where I put out like, you know, animated maps, 200 DPI maps, maps optimized for different virtual tabletops. Um, but a lot of the maps on smaller sizes are free on darkreturn.com. Um, I also put up the, the whole 1.5 system SRD is up on sagaborn.com, including the add-on books like Strongholds, Horror. Um, I did one on character quests. So basically what I'm doing with this system is like, man, everyone has, you know, we buy these systems, we put them on our shelf. Um, it's hard to keep up with all the add-ons. And I just want to put it all out there basically for free. And then, hey, if you like it, like toss me a couple bucks on pay what you want to drive through RPG or join the Patreon for a dollar a month and get maps as well. Um, because this is definitely a labor of love for me and I'm enjoying, I love people jumping in and playing in the world, playing in the system. Um, and, and it's great to have something like the Kickstarter where you say, Oh, Hey, there are people that are really interested in getting these books. And I, I appreciate it so much. Um, but at the same time, I feel like for, a game runner that already has so many books on their shelf like just go get it online <laughs> you know uh if, if if you've used the srd a hundred times and then you want to go get like the pdf cool like seriously i just love for everyone to be able to use the stuff and that's why i put it all out there so that's another definite add-on uh for sagaborn is just ease of use i try to put it all out there i try to get it as you know to you as easily and as quickly as possible so that way it's uh, good for you to use at the table um, for getting stuff out uh, for use I use fantasy grounds and that has been the best way for me to organize a campaign I feel it's one of the most robust systems out there it it has a little bit of a learning curve but if you can get over that learning curve man it it does so much stuff for you it's great and uh, I've I've got the Sagaborn system coded in. I'm just starting to look at reprogramming it because, you know, I'm an artist and a writer and, you know, web designer a tiny bit. Programmer is not really part of my wheelhouse, but I know enough to get in trouble. So I've edited the system. I found out a better way to do it. So I have to sort of start over from the bottom up, uh, semi start over. Um, but I, I think I got a pretty good handle on it. But the main thing is, is right now today for free, you can go get Sagaborn. On Fantasy Grounds, download it. It comes with a full 1.5 system built into it as stories, so it's easy to reference for players. Um, it's got character sheets built in there. It's got the classes, so you can just, you know, when someone levels up, you can drag the classes over. Um, and overall, like, there's a couple bugs because I built it on the back of other, uh, you know, D20 systems that it references. So sometimes things don't add up. I apologize. Once again, like I said, I'm not a programmer, but it is a working, you know, during the pandemic when I was playing online all the time, all of my games went through Fantasy Grounds. We all had a good time. Uh, one of my playtest groups right now, uh, everyone's separated by uh, distance, so we're playing on Fantasy Grounds. Runs perfectly fine. So it's another way to, to get this game to your table very easily. Because I know that's the hardest thing for uh, a story guide. You know, it's like if a player wants to play a new game, that's great, but then it's like, oh, man, like... Now I gotta run this new game, I gotta learn it, I gotta get it to the table, what all is it gonna take? And I've tried to uh, mitigate a lot of the issues that happen getting games to a table by making it uh, as easy as possible. So um, that's a quick overview of you know Sagaborn's uh, story guide, uh, getting the, the game to your table uh, overview. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you know, hit me up on email. Uh, we have a Discord. Uh, meet, meet me on there. Ask questions. And uh, as always, keep adventuring. Mm -hmm.